Hello, I'm Richard Bewes, and I'm greeting you from the Waterfall Studios here in Shepherd's Bush, London, England. Book by book, and I'm joined here by a little team. So, Dr. Paul Blackham, whose home was originally in Lancashire, but now in London, and also by our celebrated guest, the Reverend Sammy Dagger, who is the founder of the Alliance Church in Lebanon and vice president of the Alliance Churches in Syria and Lebanon. Sammy, welcome to London. Richard, thank you very much for inviting me. It's a great honor for me to be here with you. And I do pray that the Lord will bless our uh, effort together. Oh, yes. Well, what we're doing is the book of Joshua, back in the Old Testament. And we're going to make the great leap from, uh, well, the Iron and Bronze Age, which is 1250 years B.C., before the birth of Jesus Christ, right through to the digital era in the 21st century. And to see if we can help that uh, transition to be made, I'm going to start by reading, if I may, in our first study from the Joshua chapter 1. And here we are, verse 6. These are, this is the Lord's message to his servant Joshua. So Moses is dead, now he says, Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law that my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. I think we'll start right there, chapter 1. And, of course, you've got your Bible in Arabic, Sandy. It's, now, what, over these next six programs, what we want to do is to understand the book of Joshua better. How do you yourself, just to start us off, how do you value the study of the Word of God? Well, uh, studying the Bible, Richard, is really the bread for any person who wants to live a spiritual life. You cannot do the will of God unless you know the Bible, because God has revealed His will in His Word. And many people, when they read the Bible, they don't understand it, and then they close it and they don't read it anymore. Was that the same with you? It happened the same with me. But my teacher told me, he gave me a very simple example. He said, Sammy, imagine a cow went to a field and she want, the field was full of grass, green grass, yeah. but there was a poison tree there. And that cow was angry and she said, I don't want to, to uh, eat grass anymore. And she went, what will happen to her? I said, it'll die. I said, so many people, they die spiritually because there is a verse or two in the Bible that they don't understand. Yeah. And I suppose with perseverance, what happens is we begin to get the hang of it, begin, begin to understand what we're reading, and we do it with the help of others, of course, like we are right now. So, Paul, now here we are, Joshua. I mean, there's something significant about that name, isn't there? There's two things about it, the name Joshua. First of all, the meaning of the name, uh -huh. the Lord saves, which is the great uh, truth that we come across in the book of Joshua because we all sing songs like Joshua fought the battle of Jericho and things like that but as we study we'll discover it isn't Joshua that makes all these things happen it's the Lord who makes them happen but also it's good to know Joshua the English word uh, Hebrew Yeshua that is the name Jesus it's the very uh. same name in some ways it would have been great if the English word G Jesus had been chosen when this had been first translated and that way we would have seen the there's a tie up isn't there? there's a tie up there's parallels yeah, there between is. the Joshua and Jesus mm. and we'll see that I'm sure as we go through yeah and then Sammy what do we know from what we read here about Joshua's background his training you know that kind of thing well, Joshua, he uh, was trained at the hand of Moses. He had seen everything happen with Moses, all the miracles and all the way in the desert that they spent 40 years, and Joshua was there to see the hand of God in it all. Yes. And so, as we, Moses, my servant, is dead, now, Joshua, you're it. You've got to take up the, uh, the reins for the future. Yeah. He was trained enough. Under, under Moses' hand to be able to take the people of God all the way through. I mean, that must have happened to you in your, your own life, where the people who've helped you, now you're training many others. I mean, you have led many, many people to faith in Jesus Christ, all around the Middle East, all there in Beirut, at the height of the fighting. You started up churches. You must have had a lot of, been given a lot of courage to do that. 
Well, uh, really, our church in Lebanon is the daughter of the war. Yeah. And uh, people were coming in, in, in dozens to the Lord through, through the war, through the fear. And uh, sometimes, you know, we, we hate wars and we hate killings, but it results in a good thing that people are afraid and they come to Jesus or Savior. There's always something that can make us afraid, and especially in the venture of faith and of the Christian life. We, we know that too. Mm -hmm. Paul, when we think about these children of Israel and Joshua leading them, they've been wandering then, as Sammy said, in the desert for 40 years. I mean, that is a long time. Now they come to the promised land, they're on the border, and what do we know about this land? Well, it's an, uh, it's an amazing story. I mean, it's been a long time, not just since they came out of Egypt and have taken 40 years to make such a short journey, but actually the story goes right back, Genesis 12, 13, 15. Abraham. Abraham. The Lord appeared to Abraham and promised him that he'd have loads of descendants living in this land. Well, for Abraham, what can he see? He's just him and his wife, and they're long retired, and they have no children. Um, then they do have, uh, eventually, miraculously, one son. And they manage to get one little bit of land, but that's it. I mean, that's it. He's been promised, you know, your descendants will be like the stars of yeah. heaven. And you're going to have the promised land. He ends up with one cave and one son. son. That's, that's it. it. <laughs> and so those promises, you, you, when you're reading it the first time, you probably think, well, there's nothing going to come of that. Yeah. And then here they are, a yeah. huge number, millions of them, on the border, and they're about to enter. And that promise then, it's important that always that way that it was, uh, they, they, like Abraham, he, he lived in that land, the promise was there, he trusted in the promise, but for him his whole life wasn't just bound up in that, you know, he lived in a tent and he was looking forward to greater truths, spiritual truths. Yeah. But that was an important guarantee to him that promised land that the Lord was faithful and would always deliver in his promises. He's holding on to the promise. Then later, I think, that, you know, so that you see, first of all, the land itself. Then in the gospel stories later, yeah, yep. you see what the land is in the terms of the gospel and yep. Jesus and salvation. Yep. Further still, we see the sort of rebounding off into the last things and the new heaven and the new earth and the city that Abraham was always looking forward to from afar. Yeah. And so in that sense, there's a very wide aspect to that, to that land. So I, mean, I want to ask you a question about the, the task ahead for Joshua, because you've had huge tasks in your own work. This task for him was enormous. How does God equip um, a man or woman for, for that, for a big task ahead? Well, if you read the first chapter of Joshua, there is really, God has given us a formula of success, a formula of prosperity. And uh, in, in verse 8, in verse 8, if you, if you see, he said, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, and then you will learn all what's in it, in it to do it and then you will have prosperity. Yeah. He equipped him with the law that he should always learn and do, then he will be successful. This is the, the law of God which equipped people to have a successful life. Which has happened with you actually, it seems to me, I, if I may say with great respect, you've, you've had huge uh, challenges in your own work and with wars around you, sometimes atrocities, I know you've had guns pointed at you and things like that, and somehow or other you've come through it all uh, with your dear wife and your family, uh, with the Word of God as your, your lamp, your guide, your, your spiritual sword. I think it's wonderful to know of that in your own life. This, this is very, very true. I have tried by the grace of God to live as near as I can to the Word of God. I cannot say that I have attained but by the grace of God, I am trying, trying to forget what's behind and looking forward to a better life mm. and a more obedient life. Yeah, that wonderful verse 8. I mean, as you look at it, do not let this book of the Lord depart from your mouth, meditate on it and so on. So, Paul Blackham, how does that verse 8 set the pattern for Joshua's, well, daily routine and prepare him? Well, this Joshua chapter 1, it's full of these amazing promises to Joshua. The task before him is, from a human perspective, impossible. There's been Moses, the greatest man who's ever lived. 
conquered Egypt, everything. Yeah. And then there's Joshua. He's standing in his shoes and he's got to do it now. And he's facing enemies that are absolutely so yeah. mighty. No one, could, no one could overcome them from a human point of view. Joshua's got to. How's he going to do it? There's promises made to him. No enemy could stand against you. I'll be with you, these sorts of things. And then Joshua can think, look, the promise that God made to Abraham long ago, it's come true. Here we are, many descendants were at the land. So that's what he holds on to. And he's to think about those words of the living God. And the book of the law is full of promises. He holds on to thinks about them day and night. That says his mind all the time, turning over the promises of the living God. And if he does that, what's the big theme? Be strong and courageous. He does not need to fear anything if he fears the living God and holds on to those totally faithful promises. Mm. So we're meant to be people of the book. And uh, as you look at that chapter one, I mean, how can it help us in our daily service of the Lord, Sammy Dagger? Well, if we truly follow the book of the law and obey it, it will help everyone to have a beautiful and fruitful life. And all the trials and problems that we face, we can face it with courage because if God be with us, who can be against us? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And many times we are really afraid because we don't feel the presence of God with us. And why we don't feel the presence of God? Because we do not obey the word of God and we feel that God has departed from us. Yeah. And it's easy to feel that uh, you must do that particularly. Uh, in a future program, I must ask you about that time when you were kidnapped, for example, and were threatened with your life. And we must hear the story behind that real extraordinary um, episode. But for the moment, I think that our testimony would be that the Bible is and is, never changes. It's always there. And if we can develop the habit of getting into the Bible and studying it day by day, just as Joshua, for his part, the Bible as it was, the Bible such as it was so far, there it was for him, a great strength for every day. I mean, we try and do this every day, don't we? Yeah, we do. And it's, the, the, it's relevant to us today, because one of the, my favourite things is the way that Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 to 6, that quotes this chapter 1 of, Je of Joshua, Joshua 1 verse 9, where he's, uh, he says to Joshua, I'll never leave you or forsake you. There in Hebrews, it's saying to us, look, keep going in the Christian life, keep showing love, keep fighting against your sin, because the Lord says, I will never leave you or forsake you. So the, when we read these things, we're to say, that's for me. I've got, I'm going to live courageously and faithfully. Ties right up with the New Testament. And that, I think, perhaps is where we'll, we'll end off. I mean, our verse, for, perhaps for today, is, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. And you may be facing some new task, some new assignment, something Christian that you've been asked to do. And you're thinking, oh no, I don't think I can face this. Just remember, your Christian, your spiritual history. People have been helped before. God will help us right now. God bless you today. We'll come back in another program. <laughs>